Now, conservatives love to point out how the poor are getting handouts. The Democratic Party and liberals in general do nothing but give out these handouts to the poor. Well, there are certain reports uh, that show that Republicans and Democrats alike are not just about giving handouts to the poor, they're giving handouts to the rich, sometimes the very rich. Now, there are 10 different examples of these handouts that are given out to the very wealthy and very big corporations, and I want to go down this list of these 10 different uh, handouts, subsidies, whatever, that we're giving to the ultra-wealthy here in this tax season. Okay, a lot of these are because of tax loopholes and deductions that wealthy people get. Okay, so I want to go through this list. There's about 10 of them. We'll start out with the something called the mortgage interest deduction. Now, this mortgage and interest deduction is actually for big houses and second homes. Now, it can also apply to normal homes in very wealthy areas, for example, California and New York, where the price of living is skewed. It skews the price of living for everyone else in America because those are very high dollar values. Those are high dollar houses. There's a housing boom in California. So that does tend to inflate the prices and kind of skews things. But for the purposes of kind of uh, simplifying things, we're just going to talk in general terms, excluding New York and L.A. Because to be honest, they're not quite as representative as the rest of America. So let's get into some of these for the uh, in mortgage interest deduction. Now, this tax break uh, causes 5 million households in America that make over $200,000 a year to get more housing aid than the 20 million households living on less than $20,000 annually. Now, what is this about? This is, this is for big houses. This is for expensive houses. And this is for second homes. Now, you don't know a lot of poor people, and even a lot of people in, in, in L.A. who are in the middle class who are buying these million-dollar homes, because that's about how much it costs now. You don't see a lot of people buying a second home as well. So this will not apply. So this is a handout that affects a very small amount of people with a lot of money. Now, this deduction incentivizes people already capable of buying big homes into buying bigger ones. Oh, as if you didn't have a big enough home already. Now, this tax break applies to second homes. Now, in the eyes of the CBO and the official word on this in Washington is the mortgage interest deduction is equivalent to the government offering you money, not you keeping your own money. So this is a handout. This isn't saying we're just going to save people money on their taxes. No, we're giving you money for having a second home. You're already wealthy enough to buy a second home. Let's give you another uh, handout. Let's give you more money. Fascinating. Now, I see that there is an incentive structure in place, but to somebody who doesn't own a second home, for somebody who doesn't even own a home, I find that a little, I don't know, distasteful, I guess problematic since there are a lot of people out there who need housing assistance wouldn't that money be better off shuttling it towards i don't know affordable housing we can't do that we're going to give somebody who has a second home billy bob down the street who just bought a second house because he's a fucking millionaire he gets to have a interest deduction on his mortgage because of that second home well lucky billy bob Okay, we go further. It gets the the list gets more egregious the further we go. The next handout is the yacht tax deduction. You heard me right. It's a tax deduction for being rich enough to own a yacht. Now, basically, if you have a boat and you're paying interest on it, that interest is tax deductible. But not just any boat. Only if your boat is ginormous. It has to have sleeping quarters, a kitchen, and a toilet. Basically, a yacht. A very large, very large boat. Now, if you have a very large boat, such as a yacht, it can be considered a second home, 
and any interest you pay on it is tax deductible. If you have a normal boat, you're not in luck. Only yachts, only for very, very wealthy people. Not only that, but if you have a yacht, you can also loan it out to a charter business. I wonder if you can loan it out to your own charter business. Fascinating. It's a good question. And then, but you only have to loan it out for a certain, for a small portion of the year, and the rest of it, you can keep it for the rest of the time and allows you to deduct the purchase price, insurance and maintenance, and slip fees too. Fascinating. So yacht tax deduction. Now what about for uh, landlords? Well, there's a rental property tax credit, which to some extent I think would make a little bit of sense. Now if you're a landlord, you're a wealthy person. At least you might be. You're moderately healthy, uh, wealthy and you're making some decent money. Now you can deduct the expenses if you rent out your home, including repairs, advertising, uh, HOA fees, and mortgage interest. Here's that mortgage interest deduction once again. Now, if you rent out your first or second home for 14 days or less, you know, to maybe kind of have somebody throw a party or host a party or something, you get to take all that income tax-free. Now, this seems like, to me, a case of where something that's more well-intentioned to help people who are uh, renters or people who are renting out certain spaces to be able to help pay for, you know, things like repairs. Look, it, owning a complex or a place where you rent out, it's expensive and there is good possibility for a lot of loss. So on its face, it seems like it makes sense. But as you can see, with anything, there's a certain way that it can be abused to help people who are severely wealthy. So we go from rental property to business meals. Now, this is interesting, especially with all the uh, fighting about food stamps and whatnot that we've experienced within the last few months, the last few years, and the huge, huge cuts. Well, apparently, you can take your... Uh, you can take people out for an expensive dinner and deduct it from your taxes as long as it's a business dinner. Scott Klinger, Director in Revenue and Spending Policies at the Center for Effective Government, kind of breaks down some of the math on this. Now he explains, Imagine that the tab for dinner and drinks for 10 executives comes to about $1,600. Current tax law allows companies to deduct half of the cost of business meals, in this case, $800. With a corporate tax rate of 35%, each dollar of that deduction yields 35 cents of tax savings. So that $800 deduction saves $280 in taxes. This means one dinner for 10 people provides more public food assistance than the $279 an average household receives in food stamps for an entire month. Look, you want to complain about poor people buying uh, seafood and steak with public assistance. Here's a CEO, a hypothetical situation, which I'm sure happens a lot, since I'm sure this deduction gets used a lot. Here's a CEO, theoretically, in this situation, spending more in one meal for his executives of public money than someone on food stamps gets an entire month. And people want to bitch about somebody on food stamps buying, uh, I don't know, crab legs, which really doesn't happen all that much unless they're super cheap. Certainly people on food stamps aren't there buying, aren't out there buying fucking lobsters, except for that one dude in California, that one guy. Maybe he should just start a corporation and deduct fancy business meals from it. And now we go to something else that's also egregious that we've talked about a lot and that a lot of outlets have talked about, and that would be the capital gains tax rate. Now, uh, Washington Post explains, taxes on investment dividends and capital gains currently max out at about 24% when you add in the Medicare surtax that applies to some investment income. But the top income tax rate is 
So investment income is taxed at a much lower rate than regular income. The annual earnings of many of the ultra-rich come from investments, not from wages. This is why Warren Buffett famously has a lower effective tax rate than his secretary. Now, of course, Republicans hate this tax. They hate it being even lower. No, they hate it being this low. They want it even lower. Get rid of the uh, capital gains. Eliminate it. That's what Mitt Romney ran on. Eliminate the capital gains tax so we can pay even less. So we don't have to pay anything at all on our extravagant spending. Even that low rate is not low enough for Republicans, for the incredibly wealthy. Now, there's a few more. There's the estate tax. Well, the estate tax is, Republicans call it, the debt tax. Well, the Washington Post explains here. The estate tax is a tax on your right to transfer your property at debt. Without the estate tax, super wealthy families would be able to hoard that wealth in perpetuity. Hmm, kind of what they're doing now anyway. They would become even more powerful in the process. The tax as it currently exists only kicks in on a state's worth $5.4 million or more. So look, this is a tax that affects only the super wealthy. Now, Republicans will try to spend it to say, well, there's the debt tax, debt tax. They're, they're going to get you and your family with the debt, debt tax. Well, that only affects if, if your family makes more than an average of $5.4 million in wealth. If your estate is worth more than $5.4 million, sure, it would affect you. Anything below that, you can pass on your inheritance tax-free. And I'm sure there are other loopholes that will allow wealthy, some of the wealthier people to get around that. This should enrage you. It's called the gambling loss deduction. Now, I, I think you can already understand what this is all about. The government will provide a generous tax deduction for gambling losses. You can deduct your gambling losses up to the value of any winnings you have earned. More gambling winnings means more gambling deductions, incentivizing you to keep more to keep gambling more to break even. And if you've got more money to gamble, you'll have more losses to deduct. Piss your money away, gambling. And look, some people enjoy it. I don't have any problem with people enjoying gambling. I'm just saying that the, why should the government be giving you money to gamble? Now, of course, you could go in there and as a smaller person, person of uh, less wealth, you could probably take this deduction too. But what matters is scale. The, ec the economy is a scale here. A wealthier person is going to bet more, is going to have more money to gamble with because they have more disposable income as opposed to somebody who buys a $5 lotto ticket and loses on it. Somebody who is very wealthy gamble a lot more and deduct more of that loss that's crazy that's mental why would you give someone that deduction the ability to deduct those that's insanity okay we go on We've got a few more the social security earnings limit now this is something that bernie sanders has hit a lot on and uh, and and look a lot of uh, uh you know liberals have hit on this as well we have an issue with the Social Security earnings limit. Now, Social Security taxes only apply up to income up to $118,500. Anything after that, you make any amount of money after that, that is no longer taxed by Social Security. Now, we have an issue that eventually the trust fund is going to run out for Social Security. And that's going to re lead to reduced benefits for people who need it the most. Now, conservatives are just like, well, let's get rid of Social Security. Not a good idea. For obvious reasons, right? The fix to this would be to remove that cap. And that's something that Bernie Sanders has been really pushing for, as well as other progressives who actually believe in Social Security. According to the Washington Post, they estimate that eliminating this cap would reduce the program's long-term deficit by 86%. You could save Social Security simply by making an adjustment to this cap. Why would you allow people who are wealthier to escape paying Social Security taxes? It doesn't make any sense. If you can save the program, it's pretty simple how. Now, 
Speaking of retirement, a lot of people take Social Security in their retirement. Well, the government will also incentivize retirement by allowing you to reduce your taxable income by saving money to a 401k or an IRA plan. Well, look at that. Now, the Washington Post explains, the employer-sponsored retirement plans only benefit people, uh, those people with employers that offer them. So that leaves out a lot of people at the bottom. That leaves out people who work in food service, for example, or retail. McDonald's isn't going to offer a 401k. That's not what happens, or at least not one that's even affordable if they would uh, offer such a thing. So you run into a problem with a lot of younger people or people in part-time jobs, service sector, which there are a lot of people working in our service sector that aren't being able to save for retirement. So they're not going to be able to take this deduction. They're not going to be able to take advantage of any of these programs that people who are much wealthier are much more likely to invest in a 401k or IRA plan well, they can't take advantage of these programs like the wealthier people can. That's a bit of a problem, and it's a bit of a handout. In fact, about 66% of these retirement subsidies go to the top 20% of taxpayers. Now, how much goes to the rest of the people in the bottom, especially? Less than 1% go to the bottom 20%. What a disaster. And finally... In honor of tax day, there is a deduction on tax preparation. That's right. You can get deducted by doing uh, by having your taxes prepared. If you have hired an accountant to help you sort through these tax breaks to make sure you maximize them, which the wealthy are more likely to do, you also get to write off that expense. So there you go. Now, while some people sit there and complain about how poor people get handouts just to let them have a place to live in the case of housing assistance or allow them to eat so they can survive, here are 10 different things the wealthy get to deduct and get as a handout from you. Remember, this money comes from you. So this is something to remember on tax day. 